What's going on everybody? C4 here and today I've been able to collect my thoughts. I need it the Monday just to process everything. Uh, but the, the Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions. I'm going to try my best to remain level-headed because this is going to be my analysis from the game and what I took away from the game. And, uh, you know, thanks to everyone that joined into the live stream after the the final whistle ticked. We are on there for almost 35 minutes. I think at one point we had almost like 2,000 people watching, which was absolutely ridiculous. So definitely thank you guys for stopping by. Um, but we need to talk about everything that happened in the game. What my thoughts were actually breaking it down because then... I was a bunch of beers deep. I mean, if you follow me on Twitter, which is at PapaXC4, I was getting I was getting a little uh, rambunctious with my tweets, if you will. Uh, as only, you know, that's, that's Philadelphia Eagle fashion. After the Patriots got the lead, I was like, man, this game's over. And then, you know, clear thoughts prevailed. I was like, man, we might have a shot of winning this thing. And we, we won it, man. The first Super Bowl out of the 52 years that we've won it. I mean, most diehard Eagle fans... It's not the biggest thing that could happen because we do realize that before the Super Bowl existed, in the era of like Jim Brown, who's regarded as one of the greatest football players of all time, the championship, Philly won, what, two or three of those? So, I mean, it's still, like, it was 99%. Some people, it's 100%. For me, it was 99 because we did have championships before, and you, it'd be just incredibly ignorant to ignore the success of the past teams. But that being said, there's no more who got the rings jokes or anything like that. Philadelphia has been welcomed to the club of Super Bowl champions, and I could not be happier for this team, for this city, for this fan base, for all you guys that have been kicking it with me for six, seven years here on YouTube. You know, along with, you know, maybe a guy that eats likes to eat genitals, I've, I've been on here for as long as almost anybody, especially in the Madden community, putting on for the Philadelphia Eagles. And this is definitely, like I said, outside of probably the birth of my son, I, I don't think I can think of a, of a prouder moment, a more exciting moment in my life. After they won the Super Bowl, I posted a video after the Brandon Graham uh, sack fumble. I You could hear me. I, I was struggling to breathe. I'm not asthmatic or anything like that. But, like, literally, uh, from that moment on until after, you know... Um, Elliot kicked the field goal and the Hail Mary attempt that didn't go down. I was actually having trouble breathing. I was like, man, what the hell's happened? I haven't felt like that like since I was watching my son being born. And um, it was crazy, man. So we're Super Bowl champions. And let's jump into the player grades to talk about the game. So it was a duel. Both defenses played horrendous. I was just absolutely ripping apart Jim Swartz and the soft coverages that he was putting up. Um, but from an offensive standpoint, it was a tremendous game. Nick Foles, 28-43, 373 passing yards, three touchdowns, and the interception wasn't his fault. It was Alshon Jeffrey, and incredibly lucky. Like, at that point in time, I was like, of course the New England Patriots would get that kind of lucky break, because if one thing about the Patriots, they need the luck to compete in these games, right? But uh, we're able to persevere. So in reality, I mean, if that didn't happen, Nick Foles very well could have had four touchdowns on the day, no interceptions. But I think I look at Trey Burton, one for one, one yard, one TD. Then he threw it to Nick Foles. So Nick Foles did finish with four touchdowns on the day, um, which brings into question: What is the future of Nick Foles with the Philadelphia Eagles? That is going to be a video for tomorrow. I asked you guys on Twitter. I'm going to include some of your guys' takes from that, and we're going to really kind of break down and dive into where I think Nick Foles should go, where you guys think Nick Foles can go, and ultimately see if we can find maybe a consensus. But for now, he's a Philadelphia Eagle quarterback. He's a Philadelphia Eagle legend. He is Super Bowl MVP. He is Super Bowl winning quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, Nick Foles. And, man, I have a I have an old-ass Nick Foles jersey that I bought during the 27-2 season when I thought he might be our franchise quarterback. I got. Let, let me know right now. I paid the five bucks. I get a Super Bowl LII, Super Bowl 52 tag. And I'm going to sew that some bitch on there because that jersey is going up on the Legends wall. The Eagles Legends wall. Next to Randall Cunningham. Next to um, Trent Cole. Next to LaShawn McCoy. Next to Jerome Brown. Next to Reggie White. Those are the five. My Doc is jersey. Sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down. He, he's, he's earned every bit of that, man. And that was an incredible performance. If you told me before the game that this was going to be Brady was going to put up 500 yards of passing and over 30 points, I said we would have been done. And there was, as much as I believed in Nick Foles in this game, I thought if this game was going to turn into a shootout. We did not stand a chance. And I am very, very happy that I was wrong. Uh, so for quarterback, Nick Foles, A+. Plus. Absolute A+. Plus. Didn't do a single damn thing wrong. Moving on to the running backs, Garrett Blunt, 14 carries, 90 yards and a touchdown. J.J. 9 carries, 57 yards. And uh, Corey Clement only got eight yards. We'll talk about Clement in just a little bit. But in terms of a giant blunt, they did their job. They're getting they're getting a B plus on the day. Nothing too much. They left on the bone there. Offensive line protected very well. They both average over six yards per carry. 
Maybe even an A. Maybe give them a solid A. I mean, the running backs, could they have done more? There was a couple, nah, little Garrett Blunt runs where I think maybe a more explosive option having a Jai or Clement get it, especially on first down. I'm just not a fan of LeGarrette Blunt getting the ball on first down. I don't, I want to actually, like, dive in and see how many of his long runs. He had a 36-yarder and I think something over 10. I don't think those are on first downs. I think they're on second downs and stuff like that once they're a little bit ahead of the chains. But, um... Ultimately, man, like I said, I don't know if LeGarrette Blunt's going to be back with the Philadelphia Eagles. Personally, I, I just think, you know, you got to commit to your future backfield, which is J.J. Corey Clement. And then, you know, if a push comes to shove and you need that third option, I would much rather Darren Sproles return the mix because then we get the added special teams ability than have LeGarrette Blunt. But hey, LeGarrette Blunt could want to play for, like, league minimum or something like that just to have another chance at repeating and getting a ring. So, um, who exactly knows? But, um... If this is his last game as a Philadelphia Eagle, I salute to you, LeGarrette Blunt. I, we've had our ups and downs throughout the season, but ultimately, you showed up in the Super Bowl. Hats off to you. Moving on to the wide receivers. Nelson Aguilar, 9 catches, 84 yards. Alshon Jeffrey, 7 catches, 73 yards and a touchdown. Zach Ertz, 7 catches, 67 yards and a touchdown. Tor Smith, 5 catches, 49 yards. Obviously, Nick Foles had that 6 touchdown. Uh, I think I said 7 receptions for Alshon. He only had 3. And then, of course, Corey Clement. Four catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown for an undrafted free agent running back. I said it in the stream. I'm saying it now. If you look at how Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara ran for the Saints this year, and you want to replicate that, we have two backs that are capable of getting close to that, if not getting there, in J.J. and Coy Clement next year. And hope to God that is kind of what we're going for and kind of what we use. But as far as the receivers, man, not, there's no real drops. I think there might have been two catches the entire game that I was like, ah, they, they probably should have got that. Obviously, had the unfortunate deep ball to Alshon Jeffrey, which kind of got bobbled up and was an interception. That was very, very frustrating. Um, that was pretty much the only frustrating part of the game, uh, looking at it from the offensive standpoint. Plenty of reasons to be frustrated on the defense. But I think the wide receivers did their job. Corey Clements, touchdown. Is it a touchdown? Is it not a touchdown? I definitely think there's a chance. You know, I don't think I'm going to come out and you're going to get me on record saying that that is a 100% conclusive touchdown. But in the same regard, there was an absolute blown blown game changing no pi call on alshon jeffrey so from that standpoint i think that's a makeup call and um the zachers one zachers was a touchdown he was a, he was a, clearly a runner and he broke the plane that was a touchdown but the Corey Clement one if you're a patriot fan you're still a little bit salty i might come your way on like yeah probably if you're no neutral got in my head might not have given Corey Clement that td but in terms of a makeup call thank you very much and hell, you know what the biggest thing is? Is Roger Goodell said they want to try to reevaluate how they how they rule a catch, and this could have been it. This could have been the first game that they are trying to make the catch rule actually like, because the Corey Clement catch with the old catch rules from the, the season probably not. But in reality, should that count as a touchdown catch like Corey Clement did? Absolutely. So a catch is a catch again? Question mark? Is that what we is that what we can take away from this game? Uh, but to give the wide receivers a grade, I'd give them A. They often everyone on offense gets an A. Offensive line gets an A plus, especially Big V man. I actually really, really like the matchup. Everyone said, oh man, Big V going up against James Harrison. But if you watch Big V against the Minnesota Vikings, the power rusher and Everson Griffin, that's what you want. You don't want Big V going up against finesse guys. So seeing that matchup with James Harrison, man, he held his own. There might have been one or two plays where James Harrison got the better of them. But for the other that, he was just putting down the old man. And I'm a big fan of James Harrison. I was a little bit worried. But Big V stepped up, and then obviously Jason Kelsey, outstanding game. Wiz had a solid game. Brooks had a solid game. Lane Johnson, very, very good game. Offensive line gets an A+. Plus. Um, offense in general, A+. Plus. Uh, special teams, Jake Elliott, of course. Man, what is with... J if Jake Elliott... Like, I'm more confident. I think most people in this fan base are more confident watching Jake Elliott kick a 63-yard. What's the record? 65 with a 65-yarder. Okay, I'm more confident with Jake Elliott kicking a 65-yard kick under pressure than I would be him kicking a 20-some-yard field goal under pressure. But, I mean, he made the tough kicks. He missed the extra point, which was kind of frustrating. You saw Gostowski on the other side of the field struggle as well. I don't know if it was like a paint issue on the field. People say maybe the, the logos and stuff, the turf was a little bit gross. So, I mean, you know, it's it's been Jake Elliott throughout the season, but at least both kickers kind of struggled in that area. Both teams missed extra points, and obviously the Patriots missed a field goal where Jake Elliott was a perfect 3-for-3. Three three. Uh, Donnie Jones, solid game. Donnie Bag of Bones Jones, let's go. Special teams are putting our, our team in good field position, constantly getting 25, 23-yard line, something like that. So special teams gets himself a very, very solid B-plus grade. 
And then moving to the defensive side of the ball, Jalen Mills led the team with nine tackles on the day. Uh, Corey Graham got plenty of playing time. He had eight tackles. We got the sack from Brandon Graham, the fumble recovery from Derek Barnett. Um, the pros of the defense, there's not a whole lot. Anytime you give up over 500 yards through the air, uh, 600 some yards all purpose. I don't know what the total yardage was. It was simply ridiculous. There's not going to be a whole lot of positives. But what I can say is the Jalen Mills against Rob Gronkowski, for the most part, Especially in the first half. It looked in the second half, Corey Graham and Darby was more on Gronk. But in the first half, it was Jalen Mills. Jalen Mills kept his own with the most dominant player in football, in my opinion, regardless of position, and that is Rob Gronkowski, which gives us hope. Gives us hope because so many people are saying, you know, when Malcolm Jenkins' time to move on, who's going to go back there? Jalen Mills, you saw it there. He played like a safety. Safeties have to cover big-time tight ends, and Jalen Mills excelled at that. So I think that Jalen Mills should be able to seamlessly make that transition to the safety spot. Uh, he had a really good game, man, ultimately outside of biting on, obviously, the double move, which he's a safety. He should not have to really worry about that once he goes to his natural position. Uh, Jalen Mills played really, really well. Uh, Nigel Bradham had a solid game. Malcolm Jenkins, that hit on Brandon Cooks was awesome. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, he did, you know, head-to-head -head or helmet-to-helmet -helmet or whatever, but Cooks was established as a runner. He wasn't an unprotected receiver or anything like that. So it was legal. So that means it was free game. And Brandon Cooks caught that ball. He looked like a chicken with his head cut off. He wasn't using any football awareness. He was like, oh, no, what do I do with the, what do I do with the ball? And then he walked right into Malcolm Jenkins' hit. That's, that's what happens. I, you know, I grew up here in Canada. In hockey, they tell you to keep your head up. And if you get smashed, you know, that's what happens. Same thing in football. So uh, that was a massive hit. Big-time game changer. Took Cooks out of the game. Uh, Darby had a horrendous game. Dar Darby was the worst player on the Philadelphia Eagles, without a doubt. And that's kind of something we knew. That was his reputation coming from the Buffalo Bills, is that he'd have one or two, three big games in a row, and then he'd have a down one. And a couple of big games and a down one. So he's been good. Darby is definitely a starting corner in the NFL, but you know with the good and the bad, he's inconsistent. And hopefully, I don't mean, maybe he can turn another leaf as he matures in this league, but uh, he did not have a very good game. And you know who else didn't have a good game? Pretty much anyone on the defensive line. Until that one play, they could not stop the run very well. They could not stop the pass whatsoever. They could not affect the pass by getting to Tom Brady. That is definitely a big-time credit, I think, more so to the Patriots' offensive line. I think the Patriots' offensive line um, was probably the most dominant group out of any group from this Super Bowl. The fact that Philly, it took them the entire game, and they didn't get it till the late fourth quarter, a single sack on Brady. There's a couple times they got close. But, uh, I mean, shout out to the Patriots offensive line. I think if you're looking at this from a non-biased perspective and trying to give an MVP win or a lose, it might be the Patriots offensive line. But, um, I mean, <laughs> when you needed a play, Brandon Graham got the play. Derek Burnett recovered it. Uh, I mean, for a defensive grade, defense is getting D, a D grade, where the Patriots are getting an F. The Eagles are getting a D. It was, I mean, you can't give them anything better than that. At least the Eagles got the one turnover there. Um, but when all is said and done, man, the only, the only grade that really matters that you could take away, even from how well the offense played, and this is coming from a person that has been one of his biggest, I don't know what you, naysayers, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson gets an A++. That is the highest grade we've given out all season long. Doug Peterson, big balls Doug, against the greatest head coach in football history. He outcoached him. He outcoached him. He outgambled him. And it paid off. You don't pay. Doug Peterson came out and said, "You don't play conservative. That's how you go eight and eight. You gotta every time it's fourth and will he go for it? You go for it." And Doug Peterson, excellent, excellent game plan. Uh, being able to make Nick Foles look like what Nick Foles has looked like, excellent job. And it's absolutely the biggest joke of anything this season is that Doug Peterson didn't win head coach of the year. When you look at the the voting, he only got one vote in that poll. Doug Marone. Got more credit towards being coach of the year. I mean, he won the Super Bowl. He gets the last laugh. I'm not really stick on that issue anymore. I was salty when it first happened during the award show. But now looking back, you just got to see, like, it's laughable. <laughs> Big, he's not a better coach than Doug Peterson. He didn't. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to turn to that. So, overall, man, we're Super Bowl champions. It's awesome, man. It's absolutely awesome. And now it's time to, you know, celebrate on Thursday. There's going to be the, uh, the parade. I'm going to be watching that with my son. It's going to be absolutely awesome, man. That's, that's probably... I haven't cried yet. I got I got a little bit teary-eyed occasional times, but I might do it during the parade when I'm actually with my son because obviously he was sleeping when the game was going on. Um, but the, my mentality right now, man, is we're going to enjoy the parade, and after that, it is time to just... this. We are on the fringe. We have everything in place to be a dynasty. 
everything. We have the, you know, the quarterback, the offensive line, the running backs, the defense. Everyone is in their prime or getting ready to be in their prime. We don't have a, you know, a Oakland Raiders, Arizona Cardinals like roster where we have a bunch of veterans that were able to get one for their last run and now we have to rebuild or anything like that. We're we're ready to return next year. And it's absolutely disrespectful that Las Vegas gave the Patriots the, you know, the their the favorite odds to win the Super Bowl next year. You really want the Philadelphia Eagles to get the underdog tag once again? You think that's smart? But I, I guess it's the way it's going to be, man. And the underdog mentality looks good on us. So, I mean, looking back on it, we're Super Bowl champs. Our first Super Bowl. There's no more rings jokes. I mean, what's a Cowboy fan going to say? Your rings your rings are covered in dust. You have a, Your rings are old enough to, you know, roofie at a bar and take home. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So, Redskins, I mean, Redskins fans are actually usually polite. I actually do like Redskins fans. And Giant fans, Giant fans are the only fans I'll take it because you guys beat Tom Brady, and thank you very much for that. But on the other hand, you're just, you know, you're just not as good Eagle fans. Uh, but, I mean, this Super Bowl is absolutely huge for everyone beforehand. I wasn't old enough, but I've educated myself. The Reggie Whites, the Jerome Browns, bring it home for Jerome. Um, Donovan, even Don McNabb, Brian Westbrook, Brian Dawkins, Weapon X going into the Hall of Fame. Andy Reid for Jim Johnson, the late great Jim Johnson for Jeremiah Trotter, the Axe Man for Jason Peters, for Darren Sproles, for Carson Wentz, and every Philadelphia Eagle, every player that has put it all on the line, busted their ass for this team to fall up short or things not go their way. This is for them. This is for you fans that have suffered. We have suffered long enough and. That was the top five Super Bowl of all time, no doubt. Maybe the most exciting Super Bowl of all time. Start to finish, just non-stop offense. And we won it, man. It, it, doesn't, it still doesn't sound real to me. We won the Super Bowl. We didn't have Carson Wentz. We didn't have Jason Peters. We didn't have Darren Sproles. We didn't have Jordan Hicks. And we still beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. This is what movies are made of, man. It's, there's a reason Rocky was made in Philadelphia. It carries parallels here to our Super Bowl run. So, um, like I said, I'm a little bit calm, a little bit more somber than I was last night in the stream. The stream was absolutely lit. But uh, that does it for me today, guys. Let me know in the comment section below anything in between. Where you think Nick Foles is going to go, how you watched your Super Bowl, how you feel about winning the Super Bowl, how you feel now being a part of this dynasty. Is this going to be a dynasty? Let me know. Smash the like button if you're hype that the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.